Hello friends, welcome to the video tutorial on Firebird 5 Robotics Research Platform. This platform is based on Atmega 2560 microcontroller which belongs to the AVR architecture based microcontroller family. In this tutorial, we will learn the DC motor velocity control using pulse fit modulation. Let us look at the agenda for discussion. First, we will look at the concept of PWM and duty cycle. Then, we will learn how to generate PWM in Firebird. And finally, we will write the program using the concepts that we have learned in the tutorial. Pulse in simple terms is a signal that goes high and low rapidly. Pulse width modulation is a method of transmitting information on a series of pulses. The data that is being transmitted is encoded on the width of these pulses. The width of the pulse determines the amount of power being sent to the load. A few examples where PWM is used are electric stoves, lamp dimmers, servo motors, etc. Here we can see a signal that is in a form of pulses. As we and see that the signal is on for a certain period of time and off for a certain period of time. The time period for which the signal is high is called as the on period or T on. The time period for which the signal is low is called as the off period or T off. When the output is high, the voltage is 5 volts. When the output is low, the voltage is 0 volts. The total time period over one cycle is the sum of T on and T off. Another term that is used to tell us about the on and off time of a signal is the duty cycle. The duty cycle is given by the formula T on divided by T on plus T off into 100. In this case, the duty cycle is 50% as the signal is on and off for equal period of time. For the signal shown, we can see that the time period is divided into 8 parts. The signal is high for one part and low for the rest 7. Thus we can say that the duty cycle is 1 divided by 8 into 100 that is 12.5%. In this case too we have divided the signal into 8 parts. We can see that the T on is for 6 parts and the T off is for 2 parts. Hence the duty cycle is 3 divided by 4 into 100 or 75%. To generate PWM signal using a microcontroller, we use timers. The AVR microcontroller Atmega 2560 has 2 8-bit timers, timer 0 and timer 2, and 4 16-bit timers, timers 1, 3, 4 and 5. The timer is incremented by 1 for every clock cycle. When the timer reaches its maximum count, it rolls over and executes from the start. For an 8-bit timer, rollover occurs at 255 count and for a 16-bit timer, it occurs at 65,535 count. For now, we will be working with timer 5 to generate PWM for controlling the velocity of the motors. The duty cycle of the pulse train generated by timer 5 can be changed for every cycle, thus controlling the average power that is being supplied to the motor. We use the timer in the fast PWM mode to vary the speed of the motor. Before we start using timers, we need to initialize them using special registers. These registers are as follows. First is the tccr 5 a register or the timer counter control register A. Next is the tccr 5 b register that is the timer counter control register B. Then is the TCNT5 register that is the 16-bit timer counter. And finally is the OCR5N register that is a 16-bit output compare register. The TCCR5A register is the control register and is used to configure timer 5 for PWM generation. It has compare output mode bits which tell us what happens when compare match between TCNT5 and OCR5N occurs, while the wave generation mode bits control the counting sequence of the counter. In simple terms, it is used to select the mode in which the timer is working. As 
the timer works in various modes and generates various types of PWM as in fast PWM, phase correct PWM, phase and frequency correct PWM. The function of these bits are explained in the upcoming slide 11 and 12. Here we have initialized TCCR5A register as A9. The TCCR5A register has compare output mode bits for channels of the timer namely COM5A 1 and 0 bits, COM5B 1 and 0 bits and COM5C 1 and 0 bits. They control the output compare pins behavior that is the output compare pins are OC5A, OC5B and OC5C respectively. If one or both of the COM10 bits are set, then the OC5A output overrides normal port functionality of the IO pin it is connected to. When the OC5A, OC5B or the OC5C is connected to the pin, the function of the COM10 bits is dependent on the WGM320 bits setting. In this case, we can see when COM bits 1 and 0 are set as 0, then the port operates normally. While when the value of COM10 bits is 1, 0, initially the output at the pin is high. And when compare match occurs, it is set to low. This mode is called as the non-inverting mode. Also, when COM bits are set as 1 1 at that time the initial output at the pin is low and when compare match occurs the output is set to high this mode is called as the inverting mode wave generation mode bits wave generation mode bits are present in two registers tccr5a and tccr5b the wave generation bits 0 and 1 are present in tccr5a while wave generation mode bits 2 and 3 are found in TCCR5B. These bits control the counting sequence of the counter, the source for maximum counter value, and what type of waveform generation is to be used. Here we can see there are various waveforms generated, like frequency and phase correct, as well as fast PWM. The fast PWM differs from other PWM options in its single slope operation. Thus in the following table we can see how the wave generation mode bits are used to determine the type of output given by the timer. As we know there are various modes. In this case we are using timer 5 in 8 bit fast PWM mode as the WGM bits are initialized as 0101. TCCR5B register is used along with TCCR5A register to control the timer. In this table, we can see the various bits present in TCCR5B. The seventh bit is the ICNC bit or the input capture noise canceller bit. This bit is used when the noise canceller is activated. When this bit is used, the input from the input capture pin is filtered. The next bit that we see is the ICES bit. This bit selects which edge on the input capture pin is used to trigger a capture event. Next we can see the WGM bits which have already been explained. So we turn our attention to the clock select bits 0 to 2. These bits are used to select the type of clock input that has to be given to the timer. The significance of these bits is mentioned in the next slide. In this case, we have initialized TCCR5B register as 0B. The following table sh shows us the use of clock select bits. When the bits are selected as 011, it indicates prescalar mode where the clock frequency is divided by 64. The prescalar is used to reduce the frequency of the clock. We can also see that these bits can be used to select the external an external clock source. 
the TCNT register counts upwards or downwards according to the clock frequency. It is a 16-bit register. It counts from 0 to 255 if used in 8-bit mode and from 0 to 65535 if used in 16-bit mode. Now we look at the ocr 5 n or the output compare register. It compares itself with the TCNT counter and sets flag when match occurs indicating overflow. OCR register is also a 16-bit register like TCNT and here N represents three different registers A, B and C. Each OCR 5A, 5B and 5C can be used as a separate PWM channel. OCR is represented as two 8-bit registers OCR 5NH and OCR 5NL. PWM generated is 8 bits so only lower register is used. OCR 5AL that is pin 3 of port L is connected to the left motor and OCR 5BL pin 4 of port L is connected to the right motor. The OCR register is compared to the TCNT register to generate an interrupt or an output waveform on the OCNX pin. The image shows how the OCR register is defined. Here we can see that it is divided as two 8-bit registers. The diagram shows the output compare unit which is used to generate PWM signal. We can see that the OCR and TCNT register are compared using a 16-bit comparator. The output of the comparator is given to the waveform generator. The generator gives this output on the OCN pin depending on the wave generation mode bits. Now we will look at the timing diagram for fast PWM. Here we can see that the TCNT register overflows to zero after it has reached the maximum count. The output for one cycle is given as when TCNT is greater than OCR then the output is low and when TCNT is less than OCR then the output is high and again on overflow the output is set to high and the compare process continues. Now we will look at the syntax for the C program. First we initialize the ports for motion and velocity control in the function motion underscore pin underscore config. In this function we initialize port A for motion control and port L for velocity control. These ports must be defined as output ports. The next function is used for the PWM initialization. It is named as timer5 underscore init. In this function, we initialize the various registers that are required for generation of PWM. These registers have already been explained earlier. Now we write the main program. The main program consists of the main function. In this function, we call the various functions that have been defined earlier, like init devices, which initializes all the devices that are required for, for the working of the robot. Next, we call the velocity function and introduce a delay while changing the velocities of the robot. The next function we will be looking at is the velocity function. This function is defined to change the velocity of the motors by changing the pulse width. To generate the required pulse width, you load the values into the OCR registers. We already know that the enable pin of the motor driver is connected to the PWM channel. Also, the motor velocity depends on the average power being supplied to the motor. Thus, by switching on and off the motor driver, the average value to the motor is regulated and the velocity is controlled. Now, let us look at the demonstration. We will start with writing the C program for velocity control using PWM in Atmel Studio 6. So we open Atmel Studio 6 by double clicking on the icon. Follow the steps for creating a new project as demonstrated in the documentation of Atmel Studio 6. I have already created a project in the folder named as PWM. To open the project, double click on open project.
Then select the Atmel Studio 6 solution file by double clicking on the file. So we have our program which is opened here. As you can see the first line of the code is hash define f underscore cpu 1474560. This sets the clock frequency on which the robot is operating. It depends on the crystal frequency attached on the robot. In the case of Firebird 5 the crystal frequency is 1474560 hertz. Then we have to include some standard header files. The header files are hash include avr slash io.h, hash include avr slash interrupt.h, hash include util slash delay.h. The first function in the program is motion underscore pin underscore config. In this function the first statement is ddra is odd with 0f. This is done th so that the pins 0 to 3 of port A are initialized at output pins. The next statement is port A is AND with F0. This is done that so that the value on port A is F0 and the pins from 0 to 3 are set as 0 and the motor does not move. The next statement is DDRL is odd with 18. This is used to set pin number 3 and 4 of port L as output for PWM generation. The last statement is port L is odd with 18. This is used to set the value of pin 3 and 4 of port L as high and are you, these pins are used for velocity control using PWM. The next function that comes in the program is the init underscore ports function. In this function we call the motion underscore pin underscore config function. Moving forward we initialize the timer 5 we using the function timer5 underscore init. This function has already been explained in the tutorial. The next function we will be looking at is the velocity function. This function has already been explained in the tutorial. This function is used to control the velocity of individual wheels of the robot. The next function we will be seeing is the motion underscore set function. This function is used to define the direction in which the robot will be moving. This function is used so that the other values which were originally present on port A are not affected by the operation performed on port A. The next function we will be looking at is the forward function. This function is used to move both the wheels in the forward direction. In this function we call the motion underscore set function and pass the value of 0 6 to it. Similarly to move the robot in various ways we have written the back function, the left function and the right function. To stop the robot we have written another function and called motion underscore set in it and the value passed to this function is 0. Finally we write the init underscore devices function. In this function we initialize all the devices that are required by the robot for its motion. In this function we call the init underscore ports function and the timer and five underscore init function. As you can see we have disabled all interrupts before initializing the ports and the timers and initialize the interrupts again after initializing the ports. This is done so that during initialization the registers which are associated with the ports are not affected by interrupts. We finally come to the main function. In this function we first initialize all the devices that are required for the robot. So we call the function init underscore devices. Then we write a while loop. In the while loop we first mention the velocity for individual wheels of the robot. In this case for the left wheel it is 100 and for the right wheel it is 100. Then we call the forward function. So when the robot is in motion it will move with a velocity of 100 and in the forward direction as both the velocities are equal. 
then we introduce a delay of 1000 milliseconds so the robot moves forward 1000 milliseconds and comes to a stop then there is a delay of 500 milliseconds for which the robot stops next we have mentioned another velocity function wherein the maximum value of 255 is given to the robot and then we call the back function hence the robot moves backward with the velocity of 255 and moves backward in a faster manner than it move forward the next function we have defined is the velocity function with values 150 and 20 and then call the forward function due to which the robot rotates in the right direction Now when the velocity of the left motor is set to 20 and the right motor is set to 150, the robot will move in the left direction. Thus using the velocity function and the various functions which have been defined above, we have written the program for velocity control using PWM. Now that we have come to the end of this prog program, we have to build the program use by clicking on the build option and build the solution we can see that in the output window build has succeeded without any error so we have successfully written our program and now we can load the hex file into the microcontroller on the robot using avr bootloader so let me open avr bootloader software this is present in the start menu After opening the AVR bootloader software, the first thing we need to do is set the COM port. In this case, the COM port for the robot is 5. After which, we select the baud rate as 115200. The next thing we need to do is select the microcontroller for programming. In this case, it is at mega2560. Now, browse for the hex file which is present in the project folder named PWM. Now switch the robot in the bootloader mode by pressing and releasing the reset switch with the boot switch pressed and release the boot switch. Then click on the program button and wait for the program to load. Once the code is successfully loaded, switch off and on the robot. As you can see, the robot moves forward with a velocity of 100 and moves backward with a faster velocity of 255 than it went forward. Then the robot rotates right and then it rotates left. So here we have successfully understood the concept of velocity control using PWM and its operation in AVR based microcontroller. We have also written a program for the motion of the robot with different velocities. You can experiment with the codes and try to make the robot move in forward and backward direction with different velocities. With this we have come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for listening. For any queries or doubts you can visit us at http qaeyantraorg This is Tanmay Kauthegar signing off.